today we have something that I'm super excited about, and I know this just looks like a nondescript brown box, but I don't know how many of you are in the same situation that I have been in where, thanks to everything that's been going on globally, we've, we've been working from home, and I didn't own a webcam at the beginning of this. I had plenty of cameras. I had the, the Z cam that you see recording here. I had the, the E camera that I use for still photos. You know, I had the camera on my phone. I have stacks of IP POE cameras um, and a, a few other handheld camcorders that all spit out via HDMI. And not a single one of those is really set up to attach to a PC. And what I ended up doing personally was using an IP cam velcroed to the top of my monitor routed through OBS and then NDI and then into to Zoom uh, for calls. But this is something completely different. This is a USB HDMI capture device and we've covered those before. There's the Cloner Alliance device that I always use for recording news segments but this is a a much simpler much smaller just HD video capture USB device in this, assuming that it works well, is only nine bucks. In fact, I think you can get it for less than that. I paid $9.99 for this one on Amazon. I think if you go on eBay, you can get them for a fair bit less. So we have the device itself, a little manual or a little info card here that seems to have been printed backwards, you know, read it right to left, um, just straight up, you only need to connect your computer, it works, it does not support HDMI 2, it does not support 4K 30, 4K 60, the input resolution is 1080p 60. 99% of the time that's fine. In fact, even my Z cam, my big studio camera, will only output 1080p 60 over HDMI. And we get a little bit of driver stuff from WeStar. I don't even have a, a way to hook that up to my laptop. Um, normally I do an unboxing and then a review, but this is just such a simple device. I'm going to grab my laptop and plug it in right now. And uh, we're going to hook this up to OBS and see if we can do some capture. And I have grabbed one of my Panasonic HCV-160s. I use these as auxiliary cameras typically. The only thing I'm not a huge fan of, and this applies to most of my cameras unfortunately, is we don't get full-size HDMI. We get a uh, HDMI, we'll say that's mini, not micro. And this, although the connector is blue, this is a USB 2 device. There's only the four pins in there. There's not the extra row of contacts. There are USB 3 versions. But the one that I grabbed for bargain pricing here is only USB 2. I know there's no card. I just want you to be an HDMI output, and I might only get interlaced video out of this because these are actually 1920 by 1080i. They're not progressive. Um, so if I get 1080 29i out of this camera, that's not the capture device, that's the camera, and I will I'll use it for something else later. Maybe I'll use it for this week's news record. And, uh, kill all the things that want to launch. Yeah. I know my, my Z cam will output 1080p 60. That's usually what I record the news segments in. So let's go to properties. I need to pick my new. Wow. That's, that's it. I turned it on and 
it works. OBS picked it up, no problem. No drivers. Let's see what image format we're capturing from it. Um, just 1920 by 1080. If I set the frame rate to, that's just matching the output FPS. So I think this is spinning out 1080 i30. This is working perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and do a quick demo record. And I know there's no card, so I'm just going to pan from one side of my studio to the other. You know, real exciting. There's some bits and pieces of my multimeter and temperature probe, my focus paper, my microphones over there. There's a laptop that we're recording on, some kind of tunnel effect if I line it up with the screen. That's always a fun one. And uh, yeah, there's a box for this item and an item I got to do a tear down and a giveaway on. Or unboxing and a giveaway on, I should say. Let's see, is this getting warm at all? No, it's, it's still cool to the touch. The enclosure is plastic, but usually there's a little bit of warming that happens if it's not, or if it's dissipating any heat at all. So that's fantastic. Um, so let's talk about what you don't get with a higher end device like this one. This is the Flint 4KP that we've used. Um, I reviewed this a while back. There'll be a link to that article in the description. So what don't I get? Well, for one, this is a USB-C device, so I get to use the Thunderbolt port on my laptop. That is a compatibility thing. This is USB 2.0, and it's Type-A. I get 4K pass-through on this, so if I'm using it for a review, although I can only capture 1080p 30, I think, um, I can pass through 4K30 to my monitor while I'm working, and I use that for mini PCs and stuff like that all the time. Where So I can pass through with no delay, and then my host system, which is usually my desktop, can record. And I get dedicated audio inputs, and Flint's got a couple of newer devices uh, that do better than this. I think there's one that does 2560 by 1440, and there's one that actually has two separate input sources on it as well. There'll be links to those. I uh, haven't had a chance to review them, but I have had a chance to work with them. And they work very well. So we've got two completely different classes of device here. This is 10 bucks. It does a capture, and that's it. It only does the one thing. It captures at 1080. And if you're like me, and you, know, you don't own a webcam, but it, you've got a couple of these laying around, well you're good to go. You just need an HDMI cable and you're all set. If you need to do fancier things like I do for reviews, this is actually more appropriate. There is a higher end version of this and if everybody wants to see it, I'll see if I can get my hands on one that is USB 3 and I believe it does do 4K capture. Uh, to generate a 4K source, I might have to bring in another PC to output 4K, but that's manageable. So, I mean, that that's it in a nutshell, 999, it's just an HDMI input device, and it, it just works. There was no driver installation, no fussing, no fighting. I plugged the thing in and off it went. I will say that's one thing that's actually improved on some of the others. When I covered the Flint 4K originally, I had to install their software and use it, um, at least to get it set up. At this point, I just plug it in and OBS detects it, and off I go. So, that's it. That is the HD Video Capture Live Streaming USB device. If you're a streamer that just wants to bring in a higher quality camera than their webcam, if you're someone like me and just don't own any webcams because all your captures are done over HDMI, if you want to bring in input from another PC and record what it's doing, um, we just did that review of the 
business gaming PC, and I probably should have used this instead of doing the OBS Direct Capture, but that was just... The problem with that was it was going to interfere with uh, G-Sync on the monitor, so that wasn't an option for me there. So, yeah, I mean, that's all there is to it. It Very few and far between are the devices that I take out of the package, plug them in, and they just do what they say on the box. In fact, this one doesn't even say it does anything on the box. It just says... Four hung audio, video, H, Twitch, YouTube, and more. Um, doesn't even tell me what it does. It, it says on the device itself, here's an input, plug an HDMI in, and I'll capture it. It didn't fight with me. It didn't do any weird resolution detection. It just, it just did it. Um, the only thing that I've heard that these don't do well, and this is one of those areas where the higher end devices like the Flint have an advantage, you know, in addition to the daisy chain, the dedicated audio inputs using the newer connector. From what I've heard, attempts to use multiple of these, so if I wanted to bring in like three or four cameras and do a, a multi-camera studio setup, have not gone well. And I think that comes down to as far as the USB device enumerators are concerned, it has no way to distinguish between this one and another one. Um, they don't have any kind of unique identifier, whereas every one of these, or even every flash drive that you have, identifies itself differently to the system. It'll say, yes, I'm just another uh, Micro Center generic 8 gig flash drive, but I have this serial number or this device ID instead of this serial number, so the system can identify drive A from drive B from drive C. And five points to anyone who can tell me what drive A and drive B used to be on PCs in the comments below. With all that said, that's a little bit of ranting in a, a rather long video for a very simple device. If you just need to capture HDMI output, it works, and that's the end of it. Um, if you need to do something fancier, like see what you're capturing because you're doing game streaming, you know, you want to play your Xbox while you're capturing it, still look towards higher-end devices like the Flint. But if you just want a webcam replacement or to record output from something, this will do everything you want and then some. I do want to take a moment to thank Electrix for providing our opening and closing themes as always. That is some absolutely fantastic music and please feel free to check him out on his page. There will be a link in a card as well as in the description below to his channel. I want to thank our patrons who help make content like this possible. And I also you know, want to thank everyone for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, if there's something you want me to, to see me do with this, not that there's a whole ton left to do, uh, leave me a note and I will either try and answer your question or potentially follow it up with a new video as is appropriate. Thank you for watching.